Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Yeah, once again we are meeting and we are going to talk about the graph section today. So, yeah, today we are going to deal with a lot of graphs. So, uh, in today's graph section, so till now what we have completed in our journey of STAR program, uh, this is especially for all of the new live learners who have joined us just now for today's session. So, uh, we have started our journey with the calculus part of basic mathematics that is used in physics. Uh, we have completed differentiation, we have talked about integration, then we have directly done some neat previous year questions in the starting of our journey itself, which are based on differentiation and integration. I hope you all are uh, good and comfortable with the calculus aspect. Now, we are going to start with graphs today. Our concern for graphs is not only to understand the different shapes, but majorly to understand that what type of shape will be available in a graph governed by a particular equation. Means what sort of mathematical equations will result into straight line, what sort of mathematical equations will result into uh, parabola, ellipse, hyperbola, uh, this, that. Okay. So, let us talk what we have to uh, see in this session. First of all, if I talk about straight lines, straight lines, then we all know that a linear equation in two variables will represent a straight line. That is, represent, straight lines are represented by that in the section of graphs, first of all, we will talk about the straight lines, but yes, that we will be having in a separate class. Today, what we have to start with, we will talk about the circle, we will talk about parabola, ellipse, hyperbola and all. So, uh, these are commonly called as conic sections, conic sections. So, I will say circle, parabola, ellipse and hyperbola. So, these are the shapes you, are, you will actually get after taking the sections of cone, conic sections. Here what's happening is, so we call the circle, parabola, ellipse and hyperbola as conic sections. We have a cone and depending upon in which style you cut the cone, you take the section of the cone, by that you get a different conic section. So I'll try to make you understand, see how it's being done. So if you have the cone and uh, you can see in a cone, we can identify few shapes. This shape here is going to be a circle. This shape is going to be a circle. We will cut it in different ways. I will show you how. But before that, I am just introducing the different shapes in front of you. Uh, this will be a circle. This will be an ellipse here. This will be an ellipse. This will be a parabola. This will be a parabola. And this will be a hyperbola. Basically, hyperbola you will get kind of uh, in pair where there will be a cone, there will be an inverted cone. Their actual mathematical definition is too different. But the point is that in physics, we are majorly interested in the design and a bit about the a bit of the equation. We are not interested in their actual definition, how they are formed. But yes, as an introduction, it's easy for us to understand that there is a cone depending upon in different ways you take the section. Means in different ways you cut a particular cone, you are going to get these shapes. So circle, parabola, ellipse, hyperbola. From the next slide, I will keep introducing their equations. Their coordinates, for example, circle ke liye, we will talk about standard equation, common equation, center of circle and identifying the radius of the circle. Okay. And that will be definitely important for us in circular motion. So, as of now, if I talk about the circle, so how do we get the circle? So, we will have a cone and we will take a plane to, like a blade to cut the cone in such a way that we are cutting it like this, parallel to the base. This plane is parallel to the base. So, if I cut it like this, parallel to the base, what I am going to have is a shape 
of a circle. We will get the shape like this. We will get this shape like this here. And if I observe it from the top, if I observe it from the top, then definitely according to me as an observer, what type of shape I got here is a circle. Okay, this is the circle. What do we go? What we got here? Okay. Similarly, if I talk about this parabola, parabola. So, how do we get the parabola? First of all, I would like to talk about the ellipse because that will be similar to that of circle. Obviously, not same. So, ellipse ke liye instead of cutting with a plane which is parallel to the base, that will be a bit inclined to the base. Inclined to the base. So, you see, you are having this ellipse here. So, if you cut it like this, you will be getting a shape somewhat here. And if you observe it like an observer, so according to you, this shape is going to be an ellipse. I hope the idea is clear to you. Parabola, again, you will have this cone and you are going to cut it with a plane like this that this is going to be the plane. So, here the shape which you can get here is the highlighted shape of parabola which I have shown. But in case of hyperbola, generally we consider a cone as well as an inverted cone here. And if you take a plane and cut this perpendicular to the base, perpendicular cut by using this plane perpendicular to the base, you are using your blade or knife like this. So, what do we get here is a shape which is here and the shape which is here. If you observe it from here, you will get a hyperbola. So, in our curriculum, we have a particular hyperbola, rectangular hyperbola, then there are some terms called asymptotes, this, that, which we will uh, be rarely using. So, basically, we are not going to follow the actual mathematical definition and actual in-depth mathematics for all of these conic section. They come in too much detail, but in the subject of maths. Here, we are just going to introduce their basic parts in order to make their use in physics. I hope that's okay with you. I would suggest you to take a screenshot. I hope this basic idea of the graph is clear to you. We are starting with this now. Okay. I will explain. One by one, I am explaining everything. Hyperbola, circle, ellipse, parabola. Everything I am explaining. So, let us start with circle first. So, we are going to start with the circle. First of all, I will talk about general equation. General equation of circle. General equation of circle will be you will say uh, 1, this is x minus alpha ka whole square plus y minus beta whole square that is equal to radius ka square. Radius ka square. Okay. x minus alpha whole square plus y minus beta whole square that is equal to radius square. How to identify, sir? Suppose there is an equation given to us. How to write the equation? That's okay. But suppose there is an equation given to us. How to identify that that is the equation of circle? So, first property is, I will say, coefficient of x square, coefficient of x square must, see, that's not a linear equation, right? That's not a linear equation in two variables. So, a linear equation in two variables is going to represent a straight line, that's for sure. Here it is, coefficient of x square, that must be equal to coefficient of y square. Coefficient of x square must be equal to coefficient of y square. Another thing is, and there is no term, no term containing x, y is there. No term containing x, y together as a product is there. And also, here center of the circle, center of the circle is given by alpha, comma, beta. Center of the circle is given by alpha comma beta. Okay. And if you talk about the common equation, com this is a general equation. For example, I take one example, example one, common equation of circle. If I talk about the common equation of circle, the common equation will be x square plus y square is equal to a square. x square plus y square is equal to a square. 
और इन अ बेटर वे यू कैन राइट इट एज x माइनस जीरो का होल स्क्वायर प्लस y माइनस जीरो का होल स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू ए स्क्वायर सो हियर यू विल से द सेंटर इज बाय डिफॉल्ट डिफाइंड एज जीरो कॉमा जीरो दैट इज ओरिजिन ओरिजिन दिस इज द कॉमन इक्वेशन ऑफ सर्कल एंड इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द रेडियस ऑफ द सर्कल द रेडियस इज डेफिनेटली ए यूनिट्स द रेडियस इज ए यूनिट्स आई टेक अनदर एग्जाम्पल सो दैट यू विल गेट अ बेटर क्लैरिटी एग्जाम्पल नंबर टू सपोज वे वी से एक्स माइनस टू का होल स्क्वायर प्लस वाई प्लस फाइव का होल स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू एट सपोज वी हैव डन इट लाइक दिस नाउ वी हैव आइडेंटिफाइड दैट इट मैचेस विद द स्टैंडर्ड इक्वेशन ऑफ सर्कल सी एक्चुअल इन डेप्थ क्लैरिटी यू विल गेट when you will no circle no ellipse no hyperbola no parabola and now when you know all of these and now you are going to compare so first of all we are just going to learn them one by one finally we are going to compare all of them okay so we will say x minus 2 ka whole square plus y plus 5 ka whole square is equal to 8 that matches a bit of this form now let us try to express it in the uh, standard form so i will say this implies i can write it as x minus something so x minus 2 ka whole square प्लस y माइनस समथिंग विच मीन्स y माइनस माइनस फाइव का होल स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू समथिंग स्क्वायर दैट समथिंग स्क्वायर विल बी रूट एट और यू कैन सिंपली से टू रूट टू का स्क्वायर टू रूट टू का स्क्वायर ऑल राइट सो शेयर आई विल से दैट दिस इज अ सर्कल सेंटर इज हु सेंटर इज एट द पॉइंट टू कॉमा माइनस फाइव हु सेंटर इज एट द पॉइंट टू कॉमा माइनस फाइव एंड हुज रेडियस इज गोइंग टू बी टू रूट टू यूनिट्स radius is going to be 2 root 2 units okay if i give you the visualization of this one so i will say this is my x axis this is my y axis and uh, this is my origin suppose then i will say my center is at origin o 0 comma 0 and i'm going to get a circle i'm going to get a circle like this whose center is at the origin whose center is at the origin and radius is you will say a units a units means this these points if i am going to mark then i will say this is going to be a comma 0 this is going to be minus a comma 0 this is going to be 0 comma a and this is going to be 0 comma minus a so positive x axis negative x axis positive y axis negative y axis like that we are going to get it in this way okay i hope that's clear to you all right so this is a general equation of circle now in physics in physics generally though they don't give this cartesian form generally they don't give xy form sometimes they give the form of cos omega t sin omega t like that so suppose they say parametric form parametric form parametric form में टारगेट क्या है टारगेट ऑफ पैरामेट्रिक फॉर्म इज ऑलवेज ट्राई टू एलिमिनेट ऑलवेज ट्राई टू एलिमिनेट ऑल द अदर वेरिएबल्स और पैरामीटर्स वेरिएबल्स और पैरामीटर्स ऑल द अदर वेरिएबल्स और पैरामीटर्स होम यू आर कॉलिंग द अदर वेरिएबल्स सर यू आर कॉलिंग अदर देन एंड टेक ओनली एंड कीप ओनली एक्स एंड वाई फॉर एग्जाम्पल दट इज पैरामेट्रिक फॉर्म में इक्वेशन विल बी गिवन इन टर्म्स ऑफ थीटा और इन टर्म्स ऑफ कॉस ओमेगा टी साइन ओमेगा टी लाइक दैट बट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू कॉमेंट दैट वॉट पैरामेट्रिक फॉर्म दैट फॉर्म पर्टिकुलर इक्वेशन इज गोइंग टू रिप्रेजेंट देन यू नीड टू एक्सप्रेस दैट इक्वेशन इन टर्म्स ऑफ एक्स एंड वाई फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ नीट पी वाई क्यू आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट I'm talking about the this neat P by Q here. Neat P by Q. So here the equation is r vector is equal to r vector is equal to that's a vector equation. They are writing cos omega t in x axis x cap plus sine omega t in y axis y cap. Or generally it can also be written as cos omega t i cap. Plus sine omega t j cap. Many of you have not uh, studied the vectors, and vector schedule is also coming in this star program very soon. But we haven't discussed that vector schedule till now. Okay. 
So what I'm saying is that even if you don't, don't understand this I cap and J cap, you understand it in the first format. What does it mean, sir? Cap means what? Cap means direction. That's a unit vector that tells you only and only the direction. So basically cap will tell you the direction. They want to say that along the X axis, you have cos omega t and along the Y axis, you have the sin omega t. Tell me the design. Tell me the graph. Tell me how the particle will move. Okay. This is the position vector of a particle. This is R vector is position vector of particle. That's given. Okay. I'll mention it here that R vector is position vector of particle. Now, how to deal with that? So, I will say, suppose what is written here? I will say here x coordinate is given as in the direction of x, what is given to you? Cos omega t. And y in the direction of y, what is given to you? Sin omega t. And we know that it, till your 10th class, we have learned the basic trigonometry in which if we want to remove this, always try to eliminate, always try to remove this omega t and this. So, you can say cos square omega t plus sin square omega t is equal to 1. Cos square omega t plus sin square omega t is equal to 1. We know this relation in order to eliminate that. So, if x is equal to cos omega t, cos square omega t is x square plus sin square omega t is y square is equal to 1. Or in a better way, you can write it as x minus 0 ka whole square plus y minus 0 ka whole square is equal to 1 ka square is equal to 1 square. So, yaha pe center kya hoga? And radius, what will be the radius? So, you will say center is going to be 0 comma 0. That is again, that's and that's the origin. Center is going to be 0 comma 0. That's the origin. And if we talk about the radius, radius, the radius is going to be 1 unit. 1 unit or you can also call it unity. 1 unit or unity. I hope the logic is clear to you. So, what I am saying is that ultimately, you will have a general equation of the circle. Either you can have this general equation or you will have this common equation or sometimes they will not be even giving you the direct equation. They will be giving you a different form. Matlab, you know the equation in terms of x and y. They will be using some other parameter, some other variable. In that case, our agenda is to eliminate that third parameter or the variable and establish a relationship between x and y. I hope the logic is clear. Tell me in the comment section, is this whatever is going on? <laughs> I have told you many, many small things. Have you understood this? Are you able to visualize how a circle looks like? Yeah, good morning, good morning. Morning away. What is the meaning of cos omega t? We are not getting into too much meaning of cos omega t and sin omega t right now. What you can understand is, if instead of cos omega t, if I would be writing x is equal to cos theta and y is equal to sin theta, will you be understanding this? Because theta will be a third variable or a parameter and our job is to eliminate the third variable and the parameter. Okay, so whether it is m, k, alpha, omega t, theta, whatever it is, it is ultimately a variable. Okay. Just like you are happy with uh, x axis, x variable, y variable and z variable. Now onwards, you can also be happy with theta, alpha, beta and all. There is a meaning definitely, but right now we are not getting into the meaning because it will be unnecessarily complicating the story. Till now, the story is clear for us. Yes, yes. I'll give another example also. As of now, let's take a screenshot. Take the screenshot, then we will move ahead. Okay, good. Chaliye. Ek small explanation lete hai, but we will take the explanations. I will give you the explanation with the, uh, sorry, I will give you some more examples after the comparison. Comparison. So, first of all, we are good with circle as of now. We are good with circle. Okay. Now, we have to talk about ellipse, then parabola, then hyperbola. When we will be knowing everything, after that, after a few days, in fact, we will just clear cut take the graphs, then we will take their uh, examples and distinction also. So, I hope you have taken a screenshot. Now, I am moving ahead with ellipse. Ellipse. Now, the ellipse general equation is x square by a square 
प्लस वाई स्क्वायर बाय बी स्क्वायर इक्वल टू वन लेट्स फील अ बिट अबाउट इट इफ आई ट्राई टू डिफाइन दिस केयर दैट हाउ हाउ डू यू डिफाइन द सर्कल आई विल से कलेक्शन और लोकस ऑफ ऑल पॉइंट्स मैथ्स में जनरली वी यूज द टर्म लोकस इन ऑर्डर टू फील दैट वी आर यूजिंग द टर्म कलेक्शन ओके लोकस ऑफ ऑल पॉइंट्स विच आर इक्वी डिस्टेंट इक्वी डिस्टेंट फ्रॉम अ फिक्स्ड पॉइंट फ्रॉम अ फिक्स्ड पॉइंट in a plane this if this will be happening if if this definition is written in a plane for in a plane just shifting it a bit if i say locus of all the points for collection of all the points in a plane all the points in a plane because if you talk about in a space try to feel it there is a fixed point fixed point called sir uh, center from that fixed point if we talk about at the equal distances equal distances and if we join all the points in 3d then you will get a sphere but if you talk about in a plane in a plane then instead of sphere we will get a circle so collection of all the points which are equidistant from a fixed point this equal distance is called the radius of the circle and this fixed point is called the center of the circle if you are talking about a fixed plane but if you are talking about a plane but if you talk about three dimensional space then this fixed point will be called as center of the sphere and the distance will be called as radius of the sphere sphere we are not talking about because our interest for today is graphs okay is that clear all right so this is all about the basic definition of circle how to feel that i'm talking about ellipse and the notes will be definitely uh, shared in the telegram group whosoever out of you has not joined the telegram group you can right now click on the description of the video and there will be a telegram link click to that link and join because there all the updates and class notes and everything will be coming on the telegram group itself okay chaliye ellipse ke bare mein if we talk about the ellipse then we will say x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to 1 how it looks like first of all we will see how it looks like so we will try to understand this if x equals to 0 see if x equals to 0 then you will say y square by b square is equal to 1 or you can also say y will be equal to plus minus b so the two points which you are talking about you have got two points from here that when x equals to 0 x equals to 0 means y axis the two points are 0 comma b and 0 comma minus b the two points are 0 comma b and 0 comma minus b on the other hand if you talk about the next that is if y equals to 0 if y equals to 0 then in the similar equation you will write x square by a square is equal to 1 or x will be equal to plus minus a means the points are going to be a comma 0 and it will be minus a comma 0 points are going to be a comma 0 and minus a comma 0 so these are going to be the points and you have to see an ellipse so if you join all the points 300ly you will get this type of shape i believe okay if you join all the points free handedly you will get this type of shape and this shape is called as an ellipse the shape is called as an ellipse see i have told you this earlier also that if you cut the cone instead of a plane parallel to the base if you cut the cone with a plane inclined to the base you will get an ellipse as if you had a circle and you can stretch it like this okay so this type in physics in physics how do we uh, like what are the parameters we are interested in related to the ellipse so we will get a uh, we will get here the equation of the ellipse the a and b the lens which you can see and whenever we define an ellipse there are two special points these are called the foci of the ellipse f1 and f2 
F1 and F2 are called the foci. Single is focus. Their coordinates as of now, I want you to remember as AE, 0, AE, 0 and minus AE, 0 where E is called the eccentricity. E is called the eccentricity. We will talk about the eccentricity and all in later stages. Abhi nahi padna. And right now, you don't have to get into it. Uh, you just need to understand that this, that this here is E is referring to the eccentricity. E is referring to the eccentricity. And for ellipse, the term eccentricity is less than 1. For ellipse, the term eccentricity E is less than 1. That is why AE distance is coming out to be less than A. AE distance is coming out to be less than A. Okay. So, if I talk about the different distances now, then I will say this A is the distance A. This is the distance A. That is called semi-major axis. 2A is major axis. A is semi-major axis. Similarly, B is this distance B here. This distance B here, what you can see is semi-minor axis. Minor axis is B, total distance. This half of it is semi-minor axis. Okay. So, as the name itself suggests, semi-major axis, complete 2A will be major axis. B will be semi-minor axis, complete 2B will be minor axis. Okay. That's going to be the situation. Now, here, if I particularly talk about uh, that what type of equations, what type of uh, equations in physics will give you the ellipse shape. So, example dekhte hai. One example will be, if I write V is equal to omega under root A square minus X square, A square minus X square and the question is, plot a curve or plot a graph between V and X. So, how do we do that? First of all, we will try to, our agenda is to get a Vx curve. V will be dependent on X, suppose. And I want to get the exact design and the exact equation. So, this is, this will come in a chapter. This will come in a chapter called oscillations. Oscillations or simple harmonic motion, SHM, in class 11th. So, that will come near the end of class 11th. But that will be uh, one of the uh, uh, points, that will be one of the chapters and one of the points where you will be using the elliptical equation, equation of the ellipse. Apart from that, there is a chapter gravitation in which different laws will be there. So yes, just like circle has been very common for all of you till now. Similarly, from now onwards, ellipse, parabola, hyperbola will also be similar. So we are trying to see how to simplify this particular equation. Thank you. We are interested in V versus X, so I will try to isolate both of them. I will square both sides. Squaring both sides, what you will get? After doing the square both sides, you will get V square is equal to omega square and that's A square minus X square. Then you can shift it here. V square by omega square, that will be equal to A square minus X square. The next step will be V square by omega square plus x square is equal to a square or or if you want to write it further i'm writing it here if i take this a square in the denominator of both the equation will be x square by a square plus be careful it is v square by omega square a square can i write it as v square by omega a ka combined square and hence that will be equal to 1 that will be equal to 1 so if you notice this particular equation, the way I have told you, put x equals to 0, get the value of y. Similarly, put y equals to 0 and get the value of x. Similar thing if you try to do here, then what you will get? Ultimately, we have to mark the points. If I put, I will analyze this separately here, see. If I put x equals to 0, if I put x equals to 0, this entire term is gone. And you will get V square as omega square A square. Then we will get V as plus minus omega A. Similarly, if I put V is equal to 0, then this entire term is gone. And we will have X square by A square is equal to 1. That means X will be equal to plus minus A. Okay. So what you can say, 
put v equals to 0 if you put v equals to 0 x is equal to plus minus a so you will have this point these points here that's a comma 0 and minus a comma 0 so on x axis v value will be 0 and on v axis x value will be 0 so if you put x value 0 you will have it as a omega and it is minus a omega so that will be coordinates will be 0 comma a omega 0 comma a omega and it will be 0 comma minus a omega 0 comma minus a omega and hence if now you try to join it free handedly now if you try to join it free handedly definitely you will get this type of shape so if you exactly join them and you will get this type of shape this again gives you a feeling that it is an extended circle although in physics now onwards you don't have to comment about the name on the basis of how it appears no the design will not decide the name the equation will that's why i am talking about the design in secondary step and primarily i am talking about the equation you can notice i have taught about the equation first then i am talking about the design similarly in the circle i have talked about the equation first then i am talking about the design so if it is a proper circle you will definitely be able to identify it by its own appearance but if it is an ellipse then the, the by every mode if you modify a circle you are not going to get an ellipse ellipse will be named as the ellipse only if the equation matches with the standard one otherwise not okay so i hope you got the idea take the screenshot for this also so yeah so here we are taking a break on this session of the graphs very soon we will meet again and we can talk about the rest of the shapes as i have mentioned parabola and hyperbola okay so now you can take a break and i think the connectivity is also smooth now so in next five minutes you are going to start with your chemistry lecture okay so there is a small break right now all the best bye bye are you guys all ready to test yourself today whatever four lectures we have had till now are you all ready to test yourself yes all right so keep these things ready with you keep a paper ready with you this paper you will use to write the answers of 13 questions are there with you today okay 14 questions are there just mark 1 2 3 4 up to 14 mark 1 2 3 4 up to 14 keep a rough page with you rough notebook with you keep a rough notebook with you for the rough work okay each question is going to carry plus four if you get correct so whenever you get the answer i'll i'll discuss the answers uh, along with the question only i'll give you two minutes to solve the question so time for each question will be two minutes two minute per question see in neat level when we are discussing it's not just important to get the correct answer more important is to get the correct answer within the time limit of one and a half or two minutes so i've given you the upper limit only two minutes per question i've given you while explaining i will take one minute so i will explain for one minute so like this total three minutes per question i will take three minutes per question i will take total questions are going to be 14 questions so maximum marks are 14 fours are 56 56 marks are there at the end i will ask you how much you have performed well uh, how much you have performed in the exam for each correct one you will give yourself plus four for each answer correct you will give yourself plus four for each answer incorrect you will give yourself minus one okay after I tell you the answer, you give yourself plus 4 if you marked correct. If you marked incorrect, give yourself minus 1. If you are not able to complete incomplete question, you give yourself 0 marks. You give yourself 0 marks. Let us start. Keep all these things ready. I am starting with the question number 1. I am starting with the question number 1. Question number 1. Here are your screen. Par. In which case is the number of molecules of water maximum? Which of the following has more number of molecules of water? 
0.2224 liter of water vapor at 1 atm 273 this is stp only it is stp only so first one is water vapor i'll convert volume to moles moles to molecules volume to moles moles to molecules first divided by 22.4 liter then multiply by na okay so we get first one as molecules as 0.00224 by 22.4 Na. This is the first one. Okay. On the table of 22.4, it will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 power minus 4. 10 power minus 4 Na as the first one. Second one, 0.18 gram of water. Weight to moles, moles to molecules. Weight to moles divided by 18 gram. Multiply by Na. 0 0.18, 0 0.18 by 18 Na, which is 10 power minus 2 Na. 18 milliliter of water in the previous class i told you that whenever it is liquid water we have to think about density density is 1 gram per ml 18 ml means 18 gram water 18 gram water means 1 mole so weight 18 gram to moles to molecules weight is 18 gram divided by 18 into na i will get na number of molecules Next one is 10 power minus 3 mole, which will be 10 power minus 3 Na. Answer is this one. So, this is 10 power minus 3 Na. This is 1 Na. This is 0 0.01 Na. It is 10 power minus 4 Na. It's a neat 2018 question. Answer is 18. Okay. Next one. Similar type of question we have already done in the first day. On the first day, we have done this question. x and y combined to form xy2, xy2 and x3y2. 0.1 mole of xy2 weight 10 gram. Okay. Weight is given, moles is given. Weight by molar mass equal to moles. Weight by molar mass equal to moles. Now they have given 0.1 mole weighs 10 gram. Means 10 gram by molar mass equal to 0.1 mole. So, molar mass from here comes out to be 100 gram. Molar mass of XY2 is 100 gram. Now, they are saying for the second one, 0 0.05 mole weigh 9 gram. So, 9 gram by molar mass equal to 0 0.05. From here, molar mass comes out to be 180 gram. This is for X3Y2. Now, xy2 contains 1x and 2y, which is given 100 gram. And x3y2 contains 3x, 2y, which is going to be 180 gram. To solve for both, we will subtract the two, minus, minus, minus. 2y, 2y will cancel out. So, we get minus 2x equal to minus 80 x comes out to be 40 what are the masses of x and y first one is 40 i will not even check the second one 40 30 third option is correct 40 30 going to the next one quickly need 2016 next need 2014 equal masses of h2o2 and methane h2 O2, methane, whenever a question comes from equal masses, you take any one mass, you can take x gram, 100 gram, 200 gram, 500 gram, but it's better to take LCM of their molar mass. Its molar mass is 2, its molar mass is 32, its molar mass is 16. If I take LCM, that will be 32. So, I will take each of them 32 gram, 32 gram, 32 gram, 32 gram. Why I have done that? Because to find moles, it will become easy to divide. Moles is weight by molar mass, 32 by 2 gram, 32 by 32 gram, 32 by 16 gram. So, moles are 32 by 2, 32 by 32, 32 by 16. This is the ratio of their moles. That's the answer, 16, 1, 2. Need 2014, if you have done correct, that's good. 16, 1, 2, option 3. Till now, all are option 3 only. Option 3, option 3, option 3. Next question. You can see the answer in case we are going little faster. If you think like that, 
first of all we are not going faster it's a revision class means already we have studied this so see this video again in the evening time anybody who is not able to catch up with all the questions but you try maximum of them okay do the next one this one is little easier one so we'll quickly do or if you can check pens down weight is given molecules are asked weight is given molecules are asked weight to moles moles to molecules divided by molar mass multiply by na divide by molar mass multiply by na 64 divide by 64 because so2 is also 64 na 44 divide by again 44 na because co2 is 44 ozone 48 by ozone is also 48 na so simple 8 gram hydrogen 8 by 2 gram na this is the answer 4 na 4 na option 4 next one number of atoms in 0.1 mole of triatomic gas triatomic gas means a gas like ozone or just we'll say x3 or something like co2 any gas which contain three atoms per molecule so in ozone i would say let's say moles are given 0.1 mole atoms are asked so i'll go from mole to molecules once i know number of molecules i can reach to atoms as well how do i say that or you can just use the unitary method what was unitary method one mole ozone contains avogadro molecules each ozone has three atoms so avogadro molecules will have three na atoms this we are comparing with this moles are given so i'll keep one mole o3 has three na 0.1 mole o3 will have 0.3 na that is the answer 0.3 times 6 times 10 power 23 avogadro number which is 1.8 into 10 power 23 atoms see carefully they are not asking molecules they are asking number of total atoms 1 mole me 3 na 0.1 mole me 1.8 10 power 23 option 3 option 3 10 power 23 option 3 next quickly 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 need 2008 water molecule volume occupied one molecule of water one molecule of water first of all water is not a gas it is a liquid for liquid we use density one gram per ml so by unitary method i can say unitary method i am using whatever i know about one mole i will write i will say one mole water means 18 gram water no problem because density is one i can say 18 gram water in other words i can say 18 ml water because density is one gram in ml so when i take 18 grams of water there will be 18 ml in it one mole water contains how many molecule avogadro molecules so that's the unitary method now they are asking us molecules is given i will keep it on left hand side volume is asked i will keep it on right hand side that's all finish na molecules occupy 18 ml 6 into 10 power 23 occupy 18 ml one molecule occupies 18 by 6 into 10 power 23 ml milliliter all the options are in milliliter only because centimeter cube means milliliter so i get 3 into 10 power minus 23 ml those who have answered it correct very good very very good option one keep it up keep it up clap for yourself those who have answered it correct it's a good question most of you might do a mistake here okay next maximum number of molecules <clears throat> all right in the first one volume is given 
we have to go to molecules volume to moles moles to molecules divide by 22.4 multiply by na second one weight is given we have to go to moles then molecules weight is given divided by molar mass which is 2 gram for hydrogen gas multiply by na so i'll just find all of them quickly first one is 5 liter of N2, 5 by 22.4 Na. I am not solving it, I am just checking approximate answers. 0 0.5 gram by 2 gram into Na. 10 gram of O2 gas, 10 gram by 32 gram Na. 15 liter of hydrogen, 15 by 22.4 liter Na. I am just approximately checking. I am not checking the full answer. See, 5 on the table of almost 4, it will go. 0. 0.5 table 4, it will go. So, it is Na by 4 almost. It is Na by 4 almost. I am just checking approximate answer. Na by 4, Na by 4. This is Na by 3 almost. Na by 3 almost. And this one is Na by less than 2 because 15 by 22 is not even 2. So, it is Na by 1 and a half almost. This is the maximum one. Na by one and a half. Na by four, Na by four, Na by three, Na by one and a half. So option is four. Check the answer. Option four. Next one. Maximum atoms they are asking, but not molecules. Atoms. One gram O2. First, I will go from weight to moles moles to molecules, molecules to atoms. How do we go there? 1 gram by 32 gram moles into Na molecules. Each O2 has 2 atoms into 2. That is the first one. 1 by 32 Na into 2. Hmm. Second one. 1 gram lithium. 1 by molar mass of lithium 7 into Na Lithium is an atom only, each atom contain one atom, so I will say just one, into one. So, I am doing weight by molar mass into Avogadro number into atomicity, into atomicity, NEET 2020 question. You can see how simple questions come in NEET, 1 gram AG, 1 by 108 Na into 1, because each AG contain one atom. 1 gram magnesium, 1 by 24 Na into 1. Because each magnesium contain one atom. So, they are asking maximum. So, this becomes Na by 16, Na by 108, Na by 7, Na by 24. Na by 7 is the answer. Option 2. Good. Number of oxygen atoms in 4.4 gram CO2, 4.4 gram CO2, mole concept, 1 mole CO2 means Avogadro molecules. Each CO2 has, each CO2 has 2 oxygen atoms. So, Na number of CO2 will have double, 2 Na oxygen atoms. And CO2 ka 1 mole means 44 gram. That means 44 gram has 2 Na oxygen. 4.4 gram will have 0 0.2 Na. Means 1.2 10 power 23. Option A. Option A is correct. 1.2 10 power 23. Good, good, good. Next one. CC. CC means centimeter cube, 1 ml. CC means centimeter cube or 1 ml. 1 ml by 22.4 liter, I can say 22400 cc. This becomes moles into Avogadro number. These are the molecules. 1 by 22400 Na. So, 
molecules. So here this option to is correct, but because all of these is also there, so we have to check the other things else as well. Each molecule of N2O contain three atoms, two nitrogen, one oxygen. So if I multiply molecule with three, I'll get atoms. So I'll get three Na by two two four zero zero atoms. Means three into six into ten power twenty three by double two four double zero atoms. Means one point eight ten power twenty. One point eight ten power twenty four. <clears throat> Or that's correct only. I can write it as 18 into 10 power 23 by double two four double zero. Now I'll cut these two zeros and say this will become 21. So it will be 1.8 10 power 22. This is also correct, everybody. This is also correct. If two are correct, let's not check for the third one. Reason being, it's neat. We are not proving to anyone that we know the answer. We are not proving to anyone. We just want to get the correct answer. Check the next one yourself later. Okay. Next one. The last question. 13th one. Sorry. 12th one. 12 will do. We'll do 12. 1999. 1999. I was born by this time. By this time I was born. I was there in the world. But maybe I didn't start studying. Number of atoms in 4.25 gram of ammonia. Ammonia mole concept. One mole ammonia means 17 gram ammonia. Means Avogadro molecules. But they are asking for atoms. Each ammonia has four atoms. One nitrogen, three hydrogen. So Na will have four Na atoms. 17 gram, four Na. Finish. 17 gram, four Na. 17 gram ammonia means 4 into 6 into 10 power 23 atoms. 1 gram will be 4 into 6. 4 into 6 into 10 power 23 by 17. Now if I take for 7.5 gram, 4.25 gram sorry, 4.25 gram, this whole thing will be multiplied by 4.25. 4 4s are 16, 4.25 4s are this one, 4 and 4 will cancel out. So, Na will be the answer, 6 into 10 power 23. And that's option D. That's option D. Neat is simple but tricky. Okay, good observation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 questions we have done. All right. Now comes marking. We did 11 questions today. Maximum marks 44. Comment down your marks quickly. There are three homework questions after this. Homework will be just this PPT you will get, the same PPT. Do these questions again in the evening and last May two questions are given. See this one as well as this one. So two homeworks are there today. Now because you have solved many questions, no? now I will today send you one assignment sheet as well. 10 to 12 questions. In lecture 4, these questions which we did not solve. This one, this one, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 questions were there in the last class. So open up this file. So picture is clear in front of you. Last time we have discussed the reproductive part of the plant, flowering plant, the flower we have started last time, right? A small recapitulation for this points what we have discussed. So right now a small revision from the reproductive part of the flowering plant that is a flower. Last time we have discussed in this reproductive part, we are having the two categories of the part. One is the essential, second is the non-essential part of the flower, right? I am giving you some name of the part of the flower. You have to say me whether it is essential, 
or it is a non essential part that we have to discuss right okay calyx comes under which category calyx essential or non essential non essential very nice right very nice then what about androecium gynaecium it comes under which part androecium and gynaecium essential or non essential <coughs> essential very nice so here do remember we are talking about essential parts gynoecium and androecium why it is essential because here the gametes have to be formed and which involve in the reproduction sexual reproduction of the flowering plant then later we discussed the types of the flower like uh, one of the examples we have discussed bougainvillea can you say me bougainvillea whether it is a complete or incomplete flower bougainvillea bougainvillea is a complete or incomplete flower incomplete very nice it is an incomplete flower right that is a one category we discussed then based on sexuality of the flower we discuss unisexual bisexual flowers then even we have discussed the non essential parts of the flower where we have discussed the essential non essential like calyx and the corolla and at last we have discussed about the aestivation means how they are arranged we discussed the various types of aestivation in the last lecture last topic there we discussed the velvet aestivation we discussed about twisted we discussed imbricate type then we discussed the waxillary type right so the just the concept only the words you must be familiar just to link from your 10 to plus 1 right so don't take much tension just clarity of things are more important right okay now coming to our today's topic again uh, the remaining part of the flower we have to discuss here that uh, we have to talk about now in this session we will discuss about the essential parts of the flower like earlier we have discussed it is having the pistils and stamens comes under the essential parts means stamens are the part of androecium pistil is the part of the gynaecium non essential petals and the sepals that we have discussed now let's talk about the first about the androecium androecium just now i discussed with you it comes under the essential parts of the flower today in our session we will discuss about essential part let me to repeat this again androecium and gynaecium already in the last session we have discussed non essential calyx and the corolla that we have discussed right now let's talk about androecium can i say a unit a unit of androecium is what thing that you call it as a stamen i again repeat the point i repeat a unit a unit of androecium do remember androecium is a complete bulb one unit of that one if you take it out that you call it as a stamen right stamen other name is what microsporophyll right and typical stamen what do you mean by the typical stamen typical means which is you are assuming all the features are there which can be in different plants but right now you are considering in one go in one stamen that you call it as typical otherwise all the characters which you are assuming ideal one which is making a stamen maybe it is not in one but you are assuming it will be in all one that you call it as a typical now coming to the parts of that typical stamen <coughs> <clears throat> it consists of two parts right this upper part you call it as anther right and this part you call it as filament right this is very important thing to remember two parts of one stem and i am discussing such type of man, many stamens are there which are making the complete whole androecium right now anther in a typical stamen that is bilobed right 
can you see it is bilobed but still its bilobed character will be clear when you cut its transverse section means horizontal section when you cut it then it will be more clear we will talk about later now what is a filament can i say filament is that part which is elongated or which is long and cylinder earlier even i said you the word cylinder means something which is long and rounded like this marker in my hand no that is long and cylinder like that so it is long and cylindrical but the reproductive part main is the anther here right and earlier we have discussed all the parts where it is present all the parts they are present on a thalamus it is present on a thalamus right this thalamus is having all the parts on that and can uh, can you say me what is the stalk of the flower you call it as we discussed earlier the stalk of flower what do you call it as that you call it as pedicel and stalk of the leaf we call it as petiole last time we have discussed the difference that petiole is the stalk of the leaf pedicel is the stalk of the flower okay so this is the stalk of the flower which you call it as pedicel right so do remember at least this point this is important and in this filament this filament this end can i say this is a part of filament this end you call it as this end this end of filament you call it as a distal end right and this end which is near to thalamus you call it as proximal end right distal word wherever is there you must remember distal means distance away 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 from the main axis this is distal end near to that any word in ncert proximal means near right so near to this thalamus what is there proximal end right so can i say the filament its distal end is attached to the anther part whereas its proximal part is attached to the thalamus but here one interesting example i must say one uh exception is there means thalamus no doubt it is attached but in case of like a family of solanaceae solanaceae is such group of the plants which are having similar character there for example in case of brinjal right what is happening in solanaceae family members there the thalamus is no doubt the proximal end of this filament is attached to thalamus but along to thalamus even it is attached with the petal part right and that condition you call it as api petalous condition right and even e can be attached to the tepals i hope so you remember tepals are that category where you cannot distinguish between the sepals and the petals that you call it as what the tepals a part of perianth we discussed earlier means in case of lily example lily no doubt its part this part is attached to thalamus but additionally it is attached to the tepals as well example is a lily that condition you call it as api filous condition api means on so if this part is attached to the petal you call it as api petalous if it is attached to the tepal you call it as api filous condition right so do remember these points the introduction of the the stamen we have discussed right now there are uh, some variations from flower to flower the length of stamen cannot be same for all the stamens in one flower in one flower you have many stamens so all stamens length in some examples cannot be same what are that example let's check into that that examples will be like salvia right and even in case of mustard here stamens are of different lengths they are of different lengths here right in salvia it is showing dynamis condition 
Diadymous condition means two will be short and two will be long. Whereas in mustard, it is showing tetradynamous condition. Right? In tetradynamous, two will be short and four will be long. For example, I am explaining you for the mustard, like they are having like two short, whereas four are going to be long. Four are going to be long. Two will be short. Right? So, how many are long here? Four are long. The condition is tetradynamous. Right? And didynamous condition, only two short and two long will be there. That condition you call it as didynamous. Right? Di word and tetra word correlate with the long one. Are you getting that? So, two are long, so didynamous. Four are long, you call it as tetradynamous. Here example is master, here example will be salvia. Right? So, usually it is of same length. All stamens will be of same means filament length will be same on which this uh, anther will be there. That will be same. But in these examples, it can vary. The length of that stamens will vary due to the length of the filament. Getting that? Now, coming to the next point, there you are having the types of the androsium means the based on their fusion or whether they are free based on that some terminologies are there like if i discussed in case of um, calyx you remember we discussed the word polysaplus and gamosaplus these terms are related to the calyx and if i am saying gamopatellus and uh, polypatellus condition this is linked to the corolla part likewise we have some terms to the androsium I want everyone now listen this point very carefully because this what we are going to discuss is the main question of your NEET exam. Many times this question have been asked. Reason why? Because this topic is given in plus one and even this is given in the uh, your plus two uh, chapter, one of the chapters you will find there. We will discuss later on this. But right now, androsium do remember even having some important terminology based on whether it is free or it is fused right now coming to this uh, category the terms which are related to that right that can be based on whether the stamens they are free or they can be fused right if they are free, then which term we are using? Then we are using the term polyandrous. Right? Poly means free here. Andro word is related to androsium. Right? This is important to understand. I again repeat your command on the word should be strong. What examples are there? Don't take tension. Definitely in one go you cannot learn. Right? But understanding of term you can have by the practice, few practice if you will do, you will be a master of the words, technical terms given in your biology book. Right? I again repeat, poly means here will be free, andrus, word is related to androsium. Right? And uh, under the polyandrous condition, when stamens are not free, example here, you can learn for the mustard. Right? Now, coming to the fused one, if this point you will catch hold, right, I think so, many problems will be solved. The terminology is slightly more here. How comes? Let us see one by one, slowly and gradually coming to this point. The fused part, on the fusion, the fusion can be of two type. The fusion can be of two type. It can be the cohesion or even it can be the adhesion right cohesion means what thing when similar things are going to fuse means when stamens are fused with each other that you call it as what the cohesion but once the stamens they are fused with other members like outside the stamens what is there the petals are there, if they start fusing with them, 
like just now I given you one example that is of epi petalous condition, epi filous condition. It is nothing. The filament is going to attach, no doubt, with the thalamus, but even with the petals. They are going to fuse. That is epi petalous condition. If it is fused with the tepal, that is called epiphyllous. Right? That is adhesion. Adhesion word is for two different members from two different worlds. Cohesion means members of the same worlds. Means stamens with stamens. Right? So here, when the stamens with the stamens, that you call it as a cohesion. When stamens are fused with members of other worlds, that you call it as adhesion. Let me to write for adhesion as we have already discussed. What is the thing here? We already discussed here the epipetalous condition. Even we have already discussed here the api pillars condition right that is the adhesion the stamens are fused with the members but with the other walls of the flower now focus on the cohesion right now in the cohesion what will happen in cohesion you will find just now i said you the stamen is having two parts listen this point very carefully we are discussing about cohesion means the stamens with the stamens they are going to fused now stamen one is having two parts one is the anther one is the filament sometime in flower what happened both anther and filament of all the stamens are fused everything is fused means anther as well as filament right sometime what will happen only the anthers will fused means only the tip part, only tip part will fused, but filament will not fused. I repeat once again, during cohesion, stamens with stamens, maybe all stamen fused completely from anther towards the filament, everything fused. Or sometime what happened, only the anthers are going to fused, but filaments are free. Or sometime what will happen, the upside, the anthers are free, only filament are fused. Three conditions can be there. I will write here only filaments are fused or sometimes only anthers are fused and sometimes both anthers and filaments are fused. Are you getting that? So, do remember, we are discussing about fusion. Right? In your syllabus, you are having this part. This is important thing. This is important. We have to focus on this. Right? Now, only filaments are fused. That thing you call it as what? Adelphi. What do you call it as? Adelphi. When Adelphi will happen? When only filaments are fused, that you call it as what? Adelphi. See, I did not write the word andrus. I have written the word Adelphi. Do not confuse the word andrus and Adelphi. Adelphi means fusion, but fusion of what thing? Only filament, that you call it as Adelphi. Now, we have to discuss about this Adelphi. I am writing on a separate page now. Regarding this Adelphi, two, three points we have to take for this. Let's talk about. Okay. In the Adelphi, right, which is coming under cohesion. Can I say three Adelphi we will discuss here? One we discuss about mono. Adelphus condition. Second is di Adelphus condition. Next, we will discuss about poly Adelphus condition. Right? 
mono means one adelphus means fusion i repeat this point very important very important i need your attention on this point earlier in previous slide i said you the word about polyandrous polyandrous means free where the stamens are free now i am discussing you the word poly uh, here i am talking about polyadelphus polyadelphus means now fusion is there right polyandrous polyandrous i repeat when stamens are free polyadelphus means they are fused but they are filaments then what is the difference now between monoadelphus diadelphus polyadelphus in monoadelphus the filaments are fused such like that they are giving one single bundle the filaments are fused to give rise one single bundle that you call it as monoadelphus what will be the example here here the example will be china rose will be the example scientific term even i mention you i discuss do remember this is very important point and here you should know that china rose is a um, scientific name is hibiscus many times china rose have been given in your ncert that's why here i'm giving you its scientific name as well hibiscus even commonly you call it as a shoe flower anyway they can give you this word so be careful about the terms and the examples especially very important example i'm giving you focus in the class just uh, memorize that thing later but right now the concept we are taking diadelphus die means what thing two when they are when they are making two bundles right one bundle fused together that all fused together making one bundle and one is not going to be a part of bundle i repeat for example in case of p let me to give you with an example p in p you are having total 10 stamens in one flower i repeat in p total how many stamens are there 10 stamens are there but out of 10 9 will fused to give one bundle but one stamen will be free so can i say you will get two types of uh, things over there one as a bundle and one without the bundle or you can get two bundles one of nine and one is of one only right so nine plus one this type of thing is a diadelphus it is showing nine plus one arrangement nine they are fused this bracket is saying they are fused nine are fused one is free so that is diadelphus condition right now polyadelphus they are fused like that that you are having many bundles of the stamens when their filaments are fused here the example will be of citrus right so be careful about all these things what we have discussed main confusion point i memorize you once again polyandrous and polyadelphus polyandrous having the free stamens whereas the polyadelphus this uh, polyandrous i repeat polyandrous is having free stamens whereas the polyadelphus they are having many bundles many bundles of the stamen after fusion of their filament is that clear okay now coming to our next essential organ up to here we have discussed regarding the androecium where we have discussed about all the concepts of that that which type of uh, condition is there whether it is a free or it is a fused form if fused whether it is a cohesion type means among themselves they are fused or with the other members of the other worlds they are fused right epi patellous condition example like we have discussed solanaceae family members we will discuss what are families just right now you must remember the families are the group of the similar flowers you are keeping them together based on their some common features then poly this epiphyllous condition what is an example over there i said you epiphyllous condition that is of lily i have said you right now coming to the next essential part what is that that is the gynaecium now can i say in the gynaecium we are having uh, carpels or pistils which are fused to give one whorl of the gynaecium can i say a single unit a single unit here you call it as pistil or even we can call it as a carpel 
right now let's talk about the parts of the carpal or i can say of the pistol what are its parts but do remember likewise we discussed one stamen even you call it as microsporophyll in the same way here the pistil or carpal you call it as megasporophyll right so let's talk about it parts in this stamen we have discussed it is typically having two parts anther and the filament right now we have to take the parts of the carpal or pistil which are three main parts of that which is uh, there we will take like one by one it is made up of stigma style and ovary three parts are there right so which is the first one this is the stigma this part this you call it as a style and this one bulge one that you call it as ovary right and where it is attached now it is attached to the thalamus right this is the thalamus part and this is which part this is a pedicel part right now what is the stigma this is the receptive part receptive part of the carpal why you call it is receptive receptive part because it is receiving pollen grains when pollens are released by the anthers now let me to show you one more thing that if i discuss the word pollens now where it will be like if i am taking here this is an anther i said you anther is a main reproductive part when you cut it transfer section here what you will find you will find on its transfer section like this let me do talk you here about anther little bit so that you must know what are this pollens right you are cutting that section you will get somewhat like this type of thing right outside you are looking to that like this part right i have just cut that bilobed anther like uh, horizontally ts you call it as transverse section of anther this is a transverse section of anther transverse section means horizontal section will be there here you will find there will be the presence of the sac sac means like a bag is there like four test tubes are there na they are there inside it that is filled by what thing pollens right all are filled by the pollens these sac this blue color line circle line what i have given here this you call it as micro sporangium or you call it as a pollen sac such type of how many pollen sac are there right now in front of you four are there in a typical stamen in a typical stamen how many this pollen sac are shown over here four now inside what is present now here the pollen grains are present now once this anther become mature it will split mostly from this point longitudinally like this it will break from this slit a slit is formed it is going to break and pollens are going to release pollen are going to release mostly it is going to break from there i repeat what is there right now on the board i am discussing stamen because in the stigma of the female part i just uh, given you one word pollen you must know the pollens uh, what from where it is released this is released from the anther part of the stamen mostly when it is cutting longitudinally vertically pollens are released fine now where they try to go they will try to go on this stigma right so stigma that's why you call it as receptive part of the carpal right now this is a style part which is elongated 
elongated tube like structure right ovary can you see it is a swollen part it is a basal swollen part of the carpel right now here main part is the ovary where like we discussed in the case of the stamen pollen grains are formed right here in this case the embryo sac will form just uh, don't go after this word embryo sac reason why otherwise the things will become more complex simply you should know that reproductive thing is an anther of a stamen right but in the carpel it will be the ovary that's more than sufficient for time being right so among the filament and anthering stamen anther is the important thing over there same way among stigma style and ovary the most important is the ovary part now what is there inside the ovary you will find some chambers are there right now i have given drawn here two chambers you call it as ovarian chambers right or even you call them as a locules right now here now important thing lies there is the placenta like in case of human beings you know that a child is attached to the mother body with the placenta in the same way here the upcoming ovules which later become seed they are attached to the placenta this is a placenta part what is placenta <clears throat> this is platen cushion like part for whom it will be a cushion it will be the cushion for the ovules right these are the ovules these ovules are equivalent to the pollen sac like in stamens right there you call them as microsporangium here you call it as megasporangium right so ovule let me to write clearly here <coughs> i am writing here the word micro sporangium right what is that ovules just i must write here mega sporangium mega sporangium right mega sporangium right and microsporangium that will be equivalent to what thing pollen sac right even i discussed today megasporophyll that is equivalent to what thing pistil or the carpel and here microsporophyll which is equivalent to the stem so this analogy you should know a little bit in which context what we have used here right now let's uh, check about the part what i have said to you here here you call ovules as mega sporangium like we have say the micro sporangium in case of the male part mega sporangium we can call in the female part which thing is mega sporangium here ovules plural is mega sporangia singular is mega sporangium right now let's talk about some terms regarding this gynaecium part what are their terms you will find the terms like here apocarpus and the syncarpus right apo means what thing when the carpels are free now here you are not using the word poly here you are using the word apo here when the carpels are free 
right car carpus means for carpels sin means fused when carpels are fused that condition you call it as what sin carpus what is an example for apocarpus condition here example will be for rose and for the lotus here the example can be for tomato for the mustard i am taking that only examples which is given in your ncert book otherwise many more examples are even there right just focus on your ncert book only for example right don't go after extra books for extra examples over there focus on ncert right so here i am using that only examples which is given in your ncert book so these terms are related to the ganesium part now last topic of our day is about the when you cut the ovary you will find the various types of ovules i mean to say the ovules are arranged in various types i repeat this point when you cut the ovary you will find the arrangement of ovules varies from the species to species that arrangement you call it as placentation let's check on this point placentation types of placentation what is placentation let's talk about this thing placentation that is the arrangement of ovules on the placenta in the ovary that you call it as placentation do all the flowers are having same placentation it is not like that let's check about what is that placentation like first can you see have you seen the pea plant right in pea plant the pea pod is as a fruit so here i am talking about pea plant this arrangement of a ovule where you will find they are present on the margin what thing ovules these are the ovules when ovules are present on the margin of the ovary and in this ovary when you will open the pea pod can you see only one chamber is there that is the unilocular ovary unilocular ovary when you will find only one chamber inside it now when you open that can you see the peas are arranged in two rows over there but on the margin that's why this placentation you call it as which placentation marginal placentation right now let's see on the next now in the next point when you will see here first of all can you see it is having septa can you see the this lines are there these lines you call it as a septa right here the example will be of lemon even again here china rose will come even in case of tomato right when you cut the simply in a kitchen when you are cutting a tomato can you see they are having some uh, chambers inside that that you call it as multilocular multilocular condition of the ovary but where the ovules are arranged can you see right now the ovules are arranged in the center on the axil where they are arranged on the axil point that's why you call it as axillary placentation or you can say axile placentation right but here in marginal it is unilocular here it is multilocular right now let's check on the next one in the next one example here let me to quote it here that will be the mustard and the argemon now where are the ovules ovules are present on the wall of the ovary can you see this is a wall of the ovary 
this is even the wall of the ovary right but i am taking which wall of the ovary which is inner side this is the inner wall right these are the ovules when the ovules are arranged on the inner wall of the ovary but that periphery outside periphery means toward outside not in a center now so here they are showing the arrangement will be at periphery but let me to say here one thing that uh, you have to go with this point it is unilocular because i want to write all the points opposite to write it is unilocular because there is no septa here but what is an arrangement here it is at periphery at which wall at inner wall inner wall of ovary right now let's talk about next one now can i say this arrangement of the ovule at the center is same like what you have learned in case of this axial presentation but here it is multilocular it is having many chambers but here it is having single chamber so which type of arrangement it is showing that is showing the parietal presentation here here sorry here i must write it as a parietal presentation i forgot to write this presentation here parietal this one is axial presentation this is a marginal presentation here this presentation will be the free central free central presentation i repeat this point once again the axial presentation will be here at the center but it is same like that axial presentation but it is not having that septa this you call it as free central presentation this will be shown by which example this will be shown by dianthus and primrose right it will be shown by the primrose right and again it will be unilocular right and next we have to talk about for the example sunflower marigold now what type of presentation they are having can you see here only one ovule is present single ovule and even it is unilocular and that ovule is present at the base of the ovary such type of arrangement you call it as basal presentation right here there is unilocular even this is unilocular but they are present at the base of the ovary right so this is the basal presentation right now we have completed the type of presentation let me to recapitulate this point do remember in the first case you are having many ovules many ovules but they are at the margin that's why you call it as marginal presentation in all presentation first and last are unilocular right and even you can say okay this is even unilocular this is unilocular only this one is multilocular only this one is multilocular right i repeat this once again all are unilocular except this this is multilocular and when you see the next of the case can you see all are having many ovules only this is having one ovule are you getting that one ovule will be the case of basal presentation you will see many ovules in all the cases under unilocular one chamber you will find in all the cases except here in parietal presentation when you will come here we will discuss some of the exception that they can become bilocular two chamber exceptionally we will discuss later about that right so main thing you must uh, know right now the terminology regarding that 
uh, what type of presentation they are having just terms you should know just go with that concept once again i hope so you have understood all the points just revise it once again if still i repeat if you are not getting some one or two points then uh, just mark it when we will meet definitely we will clarify the doubts in that case right that's all for today thanks a lot students so in the previous classes we discussed about hierarchy then this phylum and all and i think i said up to serum data, then up examples of Tino Fora already completed. After Tino Fora, Platy Helminth completed. Same up to which phylum we have completed. Up to which phylum we have completed. Jayasri, Little Star, which, which phylum we completed. I am fine, beta. Tapan, I am fine. Which phylum we have completed. I think S. Helminth already completed. After it, we completed we have to start from we have to start from analyta okay so first i said i said about the s helmin in s helmin there is one property we have already discussed that s helmin phylum from s helmin phylum there is sexual dimorphism from s helmin phylum there is sexual dimorphism from s helmin phylum there is sexual dimorphism what is the meaning of sexual dimorphism means identification of the sex of individual on the basis of external character yes we have completed the nematoda so i said that ascaris 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 that is known as the round bomb ascaris that is known as the round bomb it is showing the sexual dimorphism we are able to identify the male ascaris and female ascaris on the basis of their external character. We are able to identify male ascaris and female ascaris on the basis of external character like male ascaris. Male ascaris it is sought, it is sought with, it is sought with curved tail. The tail is curved. Male ascaris is short and it is having the cow tail. On the posterior end, the tail of male ascaris is curved like this. On the posterior end, the tail of male ascaris is curved like this. So, with the help of this cow tail, we are able to identify that this one is about the male ascaris. Whereas the female ascaris, whereas the female ascaris, it is long, it is long. And it is having the straight tail. It is having the straight tail. It is having the straight tail. So, if the position of tail is like this, okay, then we can say this one is the female ascaris. So, you have to remember that sexual dimorphism means identification of the sex of individual. That is known as the sexual dimorphism. In male ascaris, male ascaris is short with cow tail and female ascaris is long with the straight tail. Okay, so this is the sexual dimorphism that is started from, from phylum Escalminth nematoda. Now, today we are coming on the next phylum that is known as the annelida. That is known as the annelida. So, today I am going to start from annelida. So, just see, very important. Why the name given as the annelida? Why the name given as annelida? So, name is given as annelida because there is one Latin word that is known as the annulus. Annulus. And the meaning of annulus, that is the ring-like structure. So, they are having the annuli. They are having the annuli means ring-like structure. That is why the name of the phylum is annelida. Why they are known as the annelida? Because they are having the little ring. Yes, Banu Kumar, they are having the little ring-like structure. That is why the name of the phylum is annelida. See, if I will say this is annelida, if I will say this is annelida, so see, like if I will say this is earthworm here, example of annelida, so, the body is divided into segments. 
फर्स्ट सेगमेंट सेकेंड सेगमेंट थर्ड सेगमेंट फोर्थ सेगमेंट बॉडी इज डिवाइडेड इन टू सेगमेंट एक्सटर्नली बाय रिंग्स ऑन द एक्सटर्नल साइड दे आर हैविंग द रिंग लाइक स्ट्रक्चर लाइक दिस ऑन एक्सटर्नल साइड दे आर हैविंग द रिंग लाइक स्ट्रक्चर दीज लिटिल रिंग लाइक स्ट्रक्चर आर नोन एज द एन्युली दैट इज बाय द नेम ऑफ द फाइलम इज एनुलिटा so you have to remember why the name of the phylum is annelida why the name of the phylum is annelida because they are having a small ring like structure because they are having a small ring like structure these small ring like structure are known as the annuli in latin they are known as the annulus that is why this 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 phylum is known as the annelida yes tanmaya that very good these segments are known as the metamers very good these segments are known as the metamers very good these segments are known as the metamer so body of a sealant trait it is having the segmented body it is having the segmented body it is having the segmented body and segments in case of annelida they are known as the metamers okay they are known as the metamer so how many phylums are having the segmented body so segmentation that is the annelida second one that is the arthropoda that is the arthropoda and third one that is the chordata in these three phylum a property is present that is known as the segmentation segmentation means division of the body sir division of the body that is known as the segmentation and segmentation is shown by three animals of three phylum annelida arthropoda and that is the chordata we are also having the segmented body head neck trunk abdomen getting now so our body can also be divided into parts that is by this is the segmented body so annelida arthropoda and chordata they are showing the segmented body see very important first point i said why they are known as the annelida because they are having the annulus what is the meaning of annulus they are having the ring like structure now second i said very important they are showing the segmentation segmentation means division of the body they are showing the segmentation means that they are showing the division of the body so these are two very important character that you have to remember about the about the annelida now coming there is there is there is one example of annelida example of annelida this one example of annelida it is known as the nereis nereis there is one example of annelida that example of annelida is known as the nereis this is the one point related with the nereis you have to remember one point it is dioecious it is dioecious nereis is dioecious nereis nereis is dioecious anyone will say what is the meaning of dioecious i said in the next class last class what is the meaning of dioecious yes you raj what is the meaning of dioecious what is the meaning of dioecious i said that nereis is dioecious dioecious means okay anyone will say what is the meaning of dioecious fastest finger first you are not replying yes dioecious means unisexual one very good very good very good dioecious means unisexual unisexual it means there is separate male nereis and separate female nereis is there so that is why it is known as the dioecious nereis it is having the lateral appendages nereis it is having the lateral appendages lateral means on the lateral side nereis is having the lateral appendages like this these all are the lateral appendages and these lateral appendages are known as the parapodia nereis is having the lateral appendages 
and these lateral appendages are known as the parapodia. Clear? So, this is the one that you have to remember. First example of annelida that is the nearest. Nearest two points you have to remember. This is one aquatic. This is one aquatic that you have to remember. It is living in the water. This annelida is living in the water. It is the aquatic. So, three points you have to remember related with the nearest I said. First point you have to remember it is the aquatic annelida. Aquatic annelida. Second point I said it is dioecious. Dioecious means unisexual. Male nearest is separate from female nearest. And third point I said it is the parapodia. It is having the lateral appendages which are known as the parapodia. Clear? So, this is the one that you have to remember. First example of annelida that is the nearest. It is looking like this. If you will see this diagram, I said that they are having the lateral appendages which are known as the parapodia. This point is very important. Clear? And they are having the segmented body. Body is segmented. These all are the segmented. These all are the segments which are present here. So, when you will come to our campus, I will say in detail about this diagram that they are having the segment. They are having the, for locomotion, they are having the seta. So, this is one detailed. I have shown you two pictures. This picture you have to keep in mind related with the nearest. When you will come to our campus, I will, I will explain this picture also because it is saying about the, about the detail. Second example of annelida that is the ferretima. Ferretima. Second example is the ferretima and it is known as the earthworm. Ferretima, it is known as the earthworm. Related with the ferretima, you have to remember one point. Earthworm is monoecious. Earthworm is monoecious. Anyone will say, what is the meaning of monoecious? I said in the last class, earthworm is monoecious. What is the meaning of monoecious? Monoecious. Yes, anyone will say monoecious. Yuraj, what is the meaning of monoecious? Ferretima posthuma. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Dixita, that is bisexual. Monoecious means bisexual. Bisexual. It means testis and ovary. They are present in the cell. So, see, they are having the female genital pore as well as they are having the male genital pore. It means they are having the female reproductive organ as well as they are having the male reproductive organ. So, this you have to remember related with the second example of annelida. What is the second example of annelida? I said that is the earthworm. And in annelida, you will find different. See now, nearest is dioecious and Earthworm is monoecious. Okay, earthworm is monoecious. This is the one point. Nearest is dioecious. Earthworm is monoecious. Another example of annelida that is the hirudinaria. Another example of annelida that is the hirudinaria. Leech. In simple language, it is known as the leech. And here, this leech is getting its food by sucking the other animals, that is by, what is the name? It is the blood sucking leech. So, you have to remember three examples in annelida. First example, that is the nearest, that is aquatic dioecious. Then, that is the ferretima, that is the monoecious. Anyone is knowing? Hirudinaria leech is monoecious or dioecious? Please try to reply, Aditya, it is monoecious or dioecious, fastest finger first. Fastest finger first, who will reply? This hirudinaria is monoecious, yes, 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 Mr. Sai Abhinav Sarma. It is bisexual, very good, very good. It is monoecious. It is monoecious means it is the bisexual. It means there is no separate male, no separate female. They are having both testis and ovary. So, I said this phylum is having both the types of animal. Some are monoecious, some are dioecious. 
सो वॉट इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ डायोसियस एनिलिडा दैट इज द नीरिस वॉट इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ मोनोसियस एनिलिडा वन इज द फेरेटिमा एंड वन इज नोन एज द ब्लड सकिंग लीच एनी वन विल से मी वॉट इज वॉट इज आथवाम फॉर आथवाम वी आर यूजिंग वन मोर टर्म आई विल राइट आथवाम इज नोन एज द फ्रेंड्स ऑफ द फॉर्मर इट इज नोन एज द फ्रेंड्स ऑफ द फॉर्मर आथवाम इज नोन एज द फ्रेंड्स ऑफ द फॉर्मर एनी वन विल से वाई इट इज नोन एज द फ्रेंड्स ऑफ द फॉर्मर नायक बी एस आर प्लीज से वाई इट इज नोन एज द फ्रेंड्स ऑफ द फॉर्मर नोन बाय यू आई थिंक इट इज नोन बाय यू वाई द आथवाम इज नोन एज द फ्रेंड्स ऑफ द फॉर्मर अ वेरी कॉमन थिंग इन डे टू डे टाइम यस 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 बालू यू हैव गिवन करेक्ट इट इज स्वाइल ईटिंग बर्मी कंपोस्ट यस अगेन वेरी मच करेक्ट इको फ्रेंडली वेरी मच करेक्ट सो सी इट इज ईटिंग द स्वाइल इट इज ईटिंग द स्वाइल इट इज ईटिंग द स्वाइल सो इट इज मेकिंग द स्वाइल पोरस इट इज मेकिंग द स्वाइल पोरस सो अथवाम्स आर यूज अथवाम्स आर यूज टू इंक्रीज द फर्टिलिटी ऑफ द स्वाइल Earthworms are used to increase the fertility of the soil. That is why they are known as the friends of the farmer. Yes, is yes, Somaya, you have written correct. Retain the soil fertility and loosening the soil. Very good. So please reply fast, fast. Okay, because you all are good. So you have written that earthworm is known as the friends of the farmer because because it is eating the soil. so by e barmi compost yes very good this is the one term that is the which is the largest longest annelida polystoma okay so it will not come in neat so that you have to remember so this is the hirudinaria that is the bisexual another example of annelida that is the aphrodite it is looking it is it is aquatic and it is living in the sea water and thus it is looking like a mice that is why it is known as the sea mouse so you have to remember four examples of annelida what are the four examples i will say it again nearest that is the first one earthworm that is the second one hirudinaria that is the third one sea mouse the aphrodite that is the fourth one these two pictures i have taken from ncrt they said that you that you have to remember now just coming on the next phylum that is the most important phylum name of this phylum is the arthropoda arthros means jointed arthros means jointed and poda means appendages appendages are you can say legs here they are having the jointed legs we are also having the jointed appendages now like this i think now we are having the joints here now so our appendages are also joints so it is the first phylum one who is having the jointed appendages that is by the name of this phylum is the arthropoda today whenever you are free please try to say Why the name is Porifera, Silentata, Tinophora, Platyhelminth, Eschelminth, Annelida, Arthropoda. So this you have to remember that they are having the jointed appendages. That is by the name of this phylum is the is the Arthropoda. Now jointed appendages and they are having one another character that is the chitinous. That is the chitinous. exoskeleton that is the chitinous exoskeleton chitinous exoskeleton the exoskeleton which is made up of chitin when there is chitinous exoskeleton which is made up of chitin it is able to prevent the loss of water what is the function of chitinous exoskeleton it is for protection first point that is for protection and second one that is the 
that is to prevent second point that is to prevent the loss of water it is also preventing the loss of water so athwa the athopoda two important characters which are present in all athoponans that is ban that is ban you have to remember ban that is that is jointed legs jointed appendages okay and second one second one that is the i said it is chitinous exoskeleton chitinous exoskeleton means that is made up of chitin so arthropoda is considered as the most successful group of animals arthropoda is considered as the most successful group of animals arthropoda is considered as the most successful group of animal why okay why just see why it is considered as the most successful group of animal because they are having the jointed legs and they are having the chitinous exoskeleton so chitinous exoskeleton it is for protection and jointed leg jointed leg they are for the movement that is why it is the largest phylum largest phylum of animal kingdom that is the arthropoda anyone will write what is the second largest phylum of animal kingdom the first largest phylum is the arthropoda what is the second largest phylum fastest finger first please write your answer okay please write your answer what is the second one second largest phylum first i said arthropoda what is the yes 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 that is the cheerful astronaut please write your correct name because you are good in zoology i want to see your correct name so just see that second largest phylum that is the mollusca second largest phylum that is the mollusca in the largest phylum arthropoda the largest class is insecta largest class is the insecta insecta that is also known as the hexapoda insecta is also known as the hexapoda why it is known as the hexapoda because it is having the six legs okay three pairs of it is having the three pairs of jointed legs it is having three pairs of jointed leg so the largest phylum is the arthropoda and the largest class of this arthropoda that is the insecta and it is written in the books out of 10 animals out of 10 animals how many insects are that is the seven insects are there out of 10 animals there are seven insect yes basant it is having the six legs that is by sign it is known as the hexapoda very good so that is the one that you have to remember that it is it is having the it is having the it is having the three pairs of jointed legs that is why it is known as the hexapoda so insecta is also known as the hexapoda clear insecta is also known as the hexapoda what is the characteristic of insecta three pairs of legs three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings this is the characteristic feature of insecta three pairs of yes 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 ready apis bombax lacifer yes these all are insects i will say all the example but you are trying your level best it's good so now that the largest phylum is the arthropoda i said why it is known as the arthropoda what are the two common characters of arthropoda then i said what is the name of the largest class of the uh, arthropoda that is the insecta insecta that is the hexapoda that you have to remember insecta and just just uh, six legs three pairs of jointed legs are there three pairs of jointed legs are there respiration first seen in arthropoda with the help of just see here a bell developed like asna tanmay said na respiration so in in arthropoda there is a different respiratory system tracheal system tracheal system this is the one that you have to remember that they are having one 
वेल डेवलप्ड एस्पेटी सिस्टम ट्रैक्ल सिस्टम सो आई सेट ज्वाइंटेड एपेंडेजेस ना आर्थोपोडा वेन वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ आर्थोपोडा आर्थोपोडा इज अ वेरी गुड ओके यस दीक्षिता यू आर करेक्ट इट इज द ट्रैकियल रेस्पिरेशन ट्रैकियल विद द हेल्प ऑफ ट्रैकी ओके विद द हेल्प ऑफ ट्रैकी दे आर हैविंग द ट्रैकी नाउ वेन वी आर सेइंग अबाउट द आर्थोपोडा आर्थोपोडा इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फाइन एनिमल ऑफ वन ऑफ द एनिमल आर सो मेनी एनिमल्स ऑफ आर्थोपोडा दे आर गिविंग सम प्रोडक्ट्स विच आर इकोनॉमिकली इंपॉर्टेंट इंसेक्ट्स इकोनॉमिकली इंपॉर्टेंट इंसेक्ट्स एनी वन विल से द नेम ऑफ एनी इंसेक्ट विच इज प्रोड्यूसिंग द हनी हनी एवरी वन नोज अबाउट द हनी हनी इज प्रोड्यूस बाय यस 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 तन्मय यू आर राइटिंग करेक्ट तन्मय यू आर राइटिंग करेक्ट एनी वन एल्स वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ द इंसेक्ट विच इज यस मंगा ओके दैट इज द हनी बी हनी बी हनी बी दैट इज नोन एज द एपिस इंडिका एपिस वॉट इज द नेम वॉट इज द जीनस वॉट इज द जीनस यट इज द एपिस सो एपिस इंडिका इट इज द नेम ऑफ द इंडियन हनी बी दिस इज जीनस एंड इंडिका इज द स्पेसिस एंड दिस हनी बी इज प्रोड्यूसिंग द हनी एंड हनी इज एन इकोनॉमिकली इंपॉर्टेंट प्रोडक्ट वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ द ब्रांच विच इज रिलेटेड विद द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ हनी बी फास्टेस्ट फिंगर फास्ट योर टाइम स्टार्ट नाउ वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ द ब्रांच विच डील्स विद द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ हनी इफ यू विल गिव द आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन Who will write the answer of this question? My question is, what is the name branch of the science which deals with the production of honey? Honey is produced by apis. So yes, 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 yes. Jupati Dhanesh Science Subramanyam. You have written the fastest finger first. The there is one branch of the science that is known as the apiculture. Apiculture. culturing of honey bee and all for the production of honey that is known as the apiculture so apiculture that is the branch of science which is related or which deals with the production of honey so when you will come to our campus i will show you this diagram in detail but at till that time you have to remember that one economically important insect that is known as the that is known as the honey bee apis any other example of insect a which is producing one useful substance for human beings any other example of insect a which is producing helpful thing or economically important thing for human beings yes 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 cheerful astronaut please correct your name beta because you are good in zoology yes it is the silk bomb silk bomb just see bombex morai it is known as the silk moth silk moth and it is used or it is producing one very important product that is known as the silk have you listen about karnataka one place kanji varam silk sarees they are at that uh, Uh, that's that uh, they are producing the silk silk is produced by silk moth bombex silk is produced by silk moth okay salim you are asking about the methodology that is big it will we will explain it when you will come to our campus semi like apiculture is related with the honey bee yes yes already written already written dikshita yes yes very good seri culture seri culture seri culture that is related with the production of silk from this bombex morai so don't think about the insects they are only causing like plasmodium is causing that uh, uh, malaria that uh, bite of the anopheles causing the malaria they are the transmitting 
we are producing some very important products also i said na honey honey is produced by honey bee apis silk is produced by silk moth yes 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 ganesh you are absolutely right how you know that i am going to ask the next question ganesh that you have listened the lacifer lacifer lacca it is known as the lac insect it is producing one product that is known as the lac yes very good so i said there are three economically important insect one what is the side heading we are discussing economically important insect economically important insect first one i said apis that is the honey bee second i said that is the bombax mori that is the silk moth and third i said about the lacifer lac insect yes very much correct lacifer okay okay very good very good all are writing that is the insect okay so these are the economically important insects means they are producing the economically important products now some insects are bad also like some human beings are good and some are bad also simply in every phylum some are good some are bad some insects are giving us a useful product some are dangerous for us we have to use the mosquito coil mosquito repellent anyway mosquito nets anyway we are trying to protect ourselves from the mosquitoes because they are the vector what is the meaning of vector one who is transmitting the pathogen from infected person to the healthy person one who is transmitting the pathogen from infected person to the healthy person that is known as the vector that is known as the vector and the vector mosquitoes are very very dangerous mosquitoes are very dangerous what are the three examples of mosquitoes anopheles culex and adis anopheles culex and adis okay they are the vector remember mosquitoes not causing any disease disease is caused by someone else they are only the vector vector means they are transmitting the pathogen from one infected person to the normal person are you getting infected person to the normal person so first of all that is the anopheles first vector that is the anopheles i think definitely you have listened about the anopheles anopheles is a transmitting mosquito for which disease anopheles is a transmitting mosquito or vector for which disease name of the disease known by you yes tanmay malaria very good malaria malaria is caused by a pathogen that is known as the plasmodium malaria is caused by one pathogen that is the plasmodium basically it's a protozoa and this plasmodium from infected person from infected person to the healthy person infected person to the healthy person this plasmodium is transmitted by female anopheles mosquito female anopheles mosquito transmitting the causative agent of malaria plasmodium from infected person to the healthy person now one curiosity in me please help me why only female anopheles mosquitoes are transmitting the plasmodium from infected to healthy why not male anopheles what the male anopheles are doing anyone will give the answer of this question why only female anopheles yes fastest finger first please reply why only male why only females are transmitting the disease why only females anopheles are transmitting the disease yes yes cheerful astronaut it is for reproduction because they need blood why not male because males are not sucking the blood female anopheles mosquito female anopheles mosquito it needs the human blood 
for its reproductive purposes. That is by female anaphylis mosquito is sanguivorous, blood sucking. It is blood sucking. So this is the one anaphylis. Anaphylis. It is the vector uh, a vector of malaria. Culex. Another malay another uh, mosquito which is which is transmitting the disease that is known as the culex. Another one that is known as the Aedes. Aedes aegypti. It is known as the tiger mosquito. Which disease pathogen is transmitted by Aedes? And which disease pathogen is transmitted by culex? So I think you know one disease that is known as the filariasis. Filariasis. Filariasis disease is also known as the elephantiasis. Elephantiasis and it is caused by one nematoda that is the bucheraria. Bucheraria that is also known as the filarial bomb. Filarial bomb. Why? Why this? That? Uh, why filariasis is known as the elephantiasis? Because the leg of a person is become like the leg of the elephant. So this is the one. This is the one. You have to remember Culex. When I am saying about the Aedes, Aedes. So I think you have listened the name of one disease, Dengue. Dengue. Dengue disease, which is very common. Dengue. Dengue in which the platelet count decreases. And when the platelet count decreases, the person is in threat because platelets are related with the clotting of blood. So you have to remember that three, three, they are very important. Mosquitoes are useful also. Apis producing honeybee, okay, Bombex producing silk moth, then Lacifolacca producing lac insect, but Anaphylis transmitting plasmodium, causative agent of malaria. Then I said Culex transmitting filariasis. Then Aedes, Dengue, Dengue, Dengue virus, it is uh, one that you have to remember. So there are varieties of mosquitoes that it is you have to remember. Have you listened? One day, the crop farmer after farming went to the home. And next day when he came to his farm, there is no crop. Suddenly, all the crop is vanished. Demolished. Where the crop is growing, that crop is eaten by a group of insects. They are known as the locusta. It is the gregarious. Gregarious means they are living in a group. Gregarious means living in a group. They are coming in the group and they are eating Are coming in a group okay gregarious means what is the meaning of gregarious they are living in a group they are living in a group they are living in a group they are coming in a group in thousands and they are eating entire crop that is why it is known as the gregarious pest it is very dangerous locusta locust it is very dangerous it is huge group yes huge group is there and uh, this this is very dangerous okay that is one point you have to remember another example of that arthropoda you have to remember this is one locusta another example living fossil living fossil so question for tomorrow i will start from here tomorrow say me first what is the meaning of living fossil what is the meaning of living fossil? Okay, so next class I will start with this point, meaning of living fossil and in the next class I will say about the, about the next one that is uh, Mollusca, then I will say about the Echinodermata and all. Okay, so all the best, we will meet again in the next class, but please revise up to, please revise up to this Arthropoda. Please revise up to this arthropoda because it's animal kingdom. So I'm going slowly because there are very interesting that we have to discuss. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.